For many years, we've used the term vestibular function testing with the implication that we're testing the entire vestibular system. In fact, most of our tests, such as the caloric test, V-hit, rotation chair, and even the dix Hallpike tests are considered tests of the semicircular canal function and do not evaluate the otoliths. In the 1990s, with the introduction of VEMPs, we finally had a quantitative test for the otoliths. Although CVEMP and OVEMP are important additions to the vestibular test battery, they require a different hardware software environment. It would be nice to be able to evaluate the otoliths within the same environment that we use for the more traditional tests, such as the caloric or the rotation chair test. The third generation of Visual Eye software offers two options for this purpose. The first one is the ocular counter roll test. It consists of tilting the head toward either the right or left shoulder in the roll plane. As you can see in this video, the head starts upright and then tilted left and held there for several seconds. Then the head is returned to the upright position and then tilted to the right. Three-dimensional eye movements are recorded throughout the test. The head tilt provokes the otolith's ocular reflex, which causes compensatory eye movements by generating static torsion of the eyes in the opposite direction. The movement also generates vertical skew deviation. In a person with normal otolith function, there's no static torsion in the upright head position and the responses to the right and left head tilts are symmetrical. Here you see the torsional eye movement recordings during the ocular counter roll test. First, the head is upright, and after a few seconds, the head is tilted to the left. Again, after a few seconds, the head is brought back to the upright position and then tilted to the right. The response consists of two components. The dynamic component is the transient nystagmus that begins during or shortly after the head tilt and lasts for several seconds. This component is mediated primarily by the vertical semicircular canals with minimal contribution from the otoliths. The static component of OCR is the persistent torsion of the eye position that lasts as long as the head is tilted. This component is mediated by the otoliths and their central pathways. In a patient with a unilateral otolit lesion, in the upright head position, the patient will have static torsion of the eyes toward the side of lesion and skew deviation, as if the head was tilted contralateral to the side of lesion. In addition, the ocular tilt response becomes asymmetrical with smaller responses for head tilts toward the side of lesion. Here you see the ocular counter roll test results in a patient with otolith dysfunction. The OVAMPs show smaller responses for the right side compared to the left side. The OCR responses for the left head tilt are larger than those of the right head tilt. This asymmetry is consistent with the OVAMP results and signifies a right utricular abnormality. So the main clinical utility of the OCR test is that it provides quantitative method to document these types of abnormalities. The second addition that allows us to evaluate the otolith function is the capability to measure the dynamic subjective visual vertical or SVV alignment. SVV is the perceptual equivalent of the ocular counter roll. Most of you are familiar with the static SVV, which can be measured with something as simple as the bucket test or with more sophisticated goggles as you can see here.
but it's also possible to measure the SVV dynamically. To measure dynamic SVV, you need a rotation chair that's capable of off-axis or eccentric rotation. During on-axis rotation, as it's depicted here on the left-hand side, responses from the right and left utricles cancel each other out, and the responses are primarily mediated by the semicircular canals. If we move the chair slightly such that the axis of rotation goes through one of the utricles, as is depicted here on the right-hand side, although it's exaggerated, then the off-axis rotation generates centrifugal forces and stimulates the contralateral utricle. After a prolonged rotation at constant velocity, the canal responses will subside, and the utricular responses, consisting of ocular counter-rolling, becomes apparent. This can be measured by the SVV test during eccentric rotation. As you can see here, a line is projected on the enclosure wall and the subject can control its orientation with a remote. This is shown here with the chair stationary to get the static SVV, but the measurement can be done during eccentric rotation to get the dynamic SVV, which can evaluate dynamic otolith abnormalities. So here's what happens during eccentric rotation. Before the test begins, the chair is moved to an off-axis position. In this case, it's four centimeters to the left, which makes this a test of the right utricular function. Then the chair is slowly accelerated toward the final velocity. In this case, the final velocity is 300 degrees per second. So it takes a few seconds to reach that final velocity. You'll see in a second. So right here. Now the patient is rotated at this final velocity for a relatively long period of time until the canal responses completely subside. At that point, the responses are mediated primarily by the right utricular function. Now, after this prolonged rotation, the um, bar is presented to the patient, and the patient can change the orientation of the bar with a remote until it appears to be vertical. So the Visualize 3.0 offers two methods for evaluating the otolith function within the same environment used for the VNG and rotation chair testing. These are ocular counter roll test and dynamic SVV during off-axis rotation. These two tests provide a more complete evaluation of the vestibular system by including tests of the otolith function.